Hello, seniors. I'm glad that you are able to view this instructional video in that probes you are interested to learn research. May this video provide you with memorable learning as you go through practical research one. Happy learning! Our lesson today is quantitative and qualitative research. At the end of this module, you are expected to differentiate quantitative from qualitative research. In the previous lessons, you were oriented with the characteristics, processes, and ethics of research. Aside from them, you also need to know the two broad categories of research. They can be identified by the type of methodology used, such as quantitative and qualitative. The research method determines the way on how the researcher will identify, collect, and analyze relevant data for his or her research. As a student researcher, choosing either qualitative or quantitative research will affect the components of your study. Hence, you need to recognize the similarities and differences between them. You will be oriented with two methods that you can use in solving problems or answering research questions. Remember that the type of information you will get depends on the type of questions you ask. There are two broad categories of research methodology, the quantitative research and the qualitative research. The method to be used in conducting a research will determine the approach the researcher takes in identifying relevant data and collecting and analyzing the information gathered in the research. Choosing either a quantitative or qualitative approach will affect the components of the research. For instance, a researcher may decide to undertake a scientific research. If he or she takes a quantitative approach, he or she will use statistical data to provide an explanation of the phenomenon. On the other hand, if the researcher chooses qualitative approach, the goal of the study will be to discuss and analyze the underlying concepts and theories related to the research topic. For you to easily understand the similarities and differences between the two research methods, here is a short definition of terms that you have to be familiar with. First, contact time. It is the period when the researcher interacts with the research subjects or participants to obtain relevant information. Second, hypothesis. A statement usually predicting the relationship between variables that can be tested by scientific research. Third, outlier, a statistical observation in a set of data that is inconsistent with the majority of the data. Fourth, output replicability, is the capability or ability of repetition, imitation, or reproduction. Fifth, research instrument, a measurement tool designed to obtain, measure, and analyze data from research subjects around the research topic. Next is sample size, the number of subjects to be taken from the target population of the study. Next, trend. An assumed development in the future that will have a long-term and lasting effect or prevailing style or preference. Next, validity. The functional quality of research instrument on updating data and producing results based on the purpose of the study. Next, variable. Any characteristic that can have different values or traits that may vary across research participants. Now, study the following table, cited by Cristobal and Cristobal in 2017 from the Social Science Research Extension Institute, the University of the Philippines, or UP Baguio, 2009. The quantitative research aims to characterize trends and patterns. 
While qualitative research involves processes, feelings, and motives, the whys and the hows, and produces in-depth and holistic data. Quantitative research usually starts with either a theory or hypothesis about the relationship between two or more variables, while the qualitative research is usually concerned with generating hypotheses from data rather than testing hypotheses. Quantitative research uses structured research instruments like questionnaires or schedules, while qualitative research uses either unstructured or semi-structured instruments. Quantitative research uses large sample sizes that are representatives of the population, while qualitative research uses small sample sizes chosen purposely. Quantitative research has high output replicability, while qualitative research has high validity. Quantitative research is used to gain greater understanding of group similarities and for qualitative research used to gain greater understanding of individual differences in terms of feelings, motives, and experiences. Quantitative research uses structured processes, while qualitative research uses more flexible processes. Lastly, quantitative uses um, methods that include census, survey, experiment, and secondary analysis. For the qualitative, uses methods such as field research, case study, and secondary analysis. Generally, quantitative and qualitative research differs on the type of data they produce. The former dwells on the collection of numerical data analyzed by the statistical analysis, while the latter deals with descriptive, in-depth, and holistic data analyzed by summarizing, categorizing, and interpreting. On this note, you need to use quantitative research if you want to confirm or test a theory or hypothesis, and use qualitative research if you want to understand concepts, thoughts, and experiences. Here is a simple example on how you can apply two methods differently on the same research question, how satisfied are students with their studies. In quantitative research, you may survey 250 students at your school and ask them a question on a scale from 1 to 5, how satisfied are you with your studies? Then you can perform a statistical analysis on the data and draw conclusions such as, on average, students rated their studies 4.1. In qualitative research, you may conduct in-depth interviews with 15 students and ask them open-ended questions such as, How satisfied are you with your studies? What is the most positive aspect of your study program? And what can be done to improve the study program? Based on their answers, you can ask follow-up questions to clarify things. Furthermore, you can transcribe all interviews and try to find patterns and commonalities. The following table from What is Qualitative Research by Alice Oturi 2011 is provided for you to be deeply acquainted with quantitative and qualitative research based on different categories such as question domains for the quantitative who, what, when, and where, for qualitative how, what and why. Common sample size for quantitative research is 150 to 200 plus respondents, while for qualitative, 10 to 15 respondents only. For the quantitative, its contact time is from 10 to 20 minutes, while qualitative research uses 45 to 240 minutes each. For Validity, quantitative research must be true of most of the data or nomothetic or law-oriented, while qualitative research must be true of each case or geographic or case-oriented. For variables, for quantitative, 
define relationships and establish general case, while for qualitative research, describe relationship and establish meaning structures and context. For the outliers, quantitative research uses unique positions lost to the weight of the average, and for the qualitative research, valuable descriptive cases with unique access to average cases. Examples of quantitative researches or service, numerical counts, statistical analysis, and mathematical modeling. Interviews, literature content reviews, real-world observations, case studies, and ethnographies are examples of qualitative. Here are some examples of research conducted by Abdullah in 2019 and 2020 to give you a glimpse on how the two methodologies can be applied in different studies. First up, we have the examples of qualitative researches. Let me read these studies. K-pop apocalypse invading Filipino cultures. This study aimed to explore why Filipino cultures are invaded by the K-pop mania. In this research, the researcher used survey and descriptive method to determine the reasons and venues of where Filipinos would usually find out about K-pop. Their answers would then help the researcher gather data on the awareness of the respondents regarding K-pop and how it has penetrated their life and culture. The second example of qualitative research is livelihood aspirations and life struggles of Bajau people. This study aimed to discover the livelihood aspirations and life struggles of Bajau people in the 21st century generation. In this ethnographic research, the researcher employed participant observation with a combination of unstructured interviews as tools in acquiring data or data. This involved the use of behavioral analysis and recording of the information gained from participating and observing on daily interactions. Through face-to-face -face discussions, the respondent's objective and detailed personal story can be told. This further granted access to deep knowledge and explanations and help in grasping the subject's perspective on their livelihood aspirations and life struggles. Moving on, let's have the examples of quantitative researches. First off, we have comparative assessment on the full implementation of senior high school curriculum among private and public schools. This study aimed to investigate the impact of the respondents' expectations and apprehensions on the effectiveness of the full implementation of senior high school curriculum. Comparative assessment of the program was conducted between private and public schools with students, parents, teachers, and principals as respondents. To give comprehensive analysis, interpretation and implication of data, weighted mean, t-test, ANOVA, and person R were employed. The second example is use of supplemental learning materials in improving students' academic and attitudes in pre-calculus. This study aimed to determine the effect of simplified supplemental learning of materials in improving students' achievement and attitude towards pre-calculus. Quasi-experimental research design was employed with 70 students as subjects of the study. Mean percentage score or MPS weighted mean and t-test were applied to describe data and make good inferences about the experimentation. The researcher used the gathered statistical data to analyze and interpret the achievement and attitudes of students on using the supplemental learning materials in pre-calculus. That's the end of our lesson today. It's been my pleasure teaching you one of the amazing topics of Practical Research 1, and I really hope you learned something from this video lesson. Thank you, and may God bless us all. Let's meet again in our next video.